Today's video is about .NET and specifically what is .NET, what can you do with .NET and some misconceptions that you may have about .NET. Now, before we get started, I do want to announce my brand new course, Getting Started with Domain Driven Design. Check it out. I think it's the most comprehensive course that you can find on Domain Driven Design, taking you from the very basics, assuming you have no knowledge in Domain Driven Design and taking you up until some complex topics that you definitely need to know about if you want to fully grasp and get the essence of domain driven design. So if that sounds intriguing, then make sure to check out the curriculum. The link is linked in the description. And if you're purchasing the course, then make sure to use the promo code AMIDDD for a 20% discount. Now back to .NET. .NET is a framework. It's an ecosystem for developing applications. Initially in 2002, when .NET was first released, then you could only use a Windows machine to develop .NET applications, but that has changed dramatically over the years and specifically in the past 10 years, .NET has made an incredible change that I think you should definitely know about if you still think that .NET developers are living in the 90s. So .NET written by the cool kids, as you can see on the screen, is first of all free, it's open source, you can find all the source code of all the various frameworks, etc., and the languages on GitHub, it's open source and it's cross-platform, which means you can develop .NET applications on your Mac, your Windows, or your Linux machine. But what is it actually when we say .NET and we're saying it's a framework or an ecosystem, what does that include and what are .NET developers? So when we say ecosystem, we're talking about the languages. So there's C Sharp, F Sharp, Visual Basic, all these various other languages under the umbrella of .NET. We have the languages, we have the compilers, that know how to take these languages and turn them into Microsoft Intermediate Language, known as MSIL or just IL code, similar to how Java and Kotlin are both compiled into bytecode. So also .NET is compiled into an intermediate language that is executed by some runtime. The runtimes are similar to your JVM, so it knows how to take the IL code and execute it on various machines. That's why you can run your .NET code on Windows, on Mac, on Linux, on Raspberry Pis, etc., etc. Another important thing to note is the BCL or the base class library. This is a rich set of libraries that allow you to do almost anything that you need from a mature language that you simply get out of the box and it evolves with time. And again, this also is open source. Now, what can you actually build with .NET? So everything that you see on the screen, you can develop with the .NET framework. Now to get started with .NET, all you need to do is go and download the .NET SDK. Once you've installed the SDK, then you can go ahead and use the .NET CLI. Using the .NET CLI, you can also create various applications. For example, this following line will create a console application using the C Sharp language and it will put it in this folder and simply run .NET run, which will run the default templates console application that will simply output hello world to the screen. Now, the beauty is that you can also do the following. You can say instead of C sharp, you can say F sharp. And then over here, we can also say .NET run, and this will run the F sharp template. Even though these applications are written in different languages, so as you can see, C sharp, F sharp, and Visual Basic, if you're looking at how they're compiled, then you can see that all of them are compiled to a DLL file. This DLL file is the intermediate language that we talked about. Now, as you can see, the C Sharp one is compiled to a DLL, but also F Sharp and Visual Basic are also compiled into these DLLs. Now, the beauty is that the runtime knows how to take these DLLs and compile them just in time into the native machine language needed for the machine that it's running on and you have this interchangeability, even though they were written in completely different languages. Now, we up until now looked at console applications and the simple example of Hello World, but you can build various other types of applications using .NET. One of them is Web APIs. So here's a three line example for building a Web API that returns Hello World from the default route. Then we have web applications. For web applications, there are a few frameworks one of them is Blazor. So here's an example of some code where you can see we have the view part on the top and the code block in the bottom. This code, as you can notice, is simply C-sharp. This means that you can use your favorite .NET language 
for your front end as well. The reason why this is so powerful is because if you have a library that you like using, you can go ahead and use it from your front end, your back end. It's compatible across all the various .NET applications. Then you have NuGet. NuGet is your NPM, your Maven, Gradle, PyPI. It's your package manager for .NET packages. So if you're looking for a specific package, then you can go ahead, search for it and find it over here, which means that you can go ahead and add any package that you want to your application like so. The free open source ecosystem of .NET packages is huge and you can find a package for probably any need that you have. So that has been a taste of .NET. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. Make sure to smash the like button and smash the subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one.